College Football 25, along with PGA Tour 24, 2K is no longer sitting at the top of an unreachable throne. EA proved that they can still create good sports games, as crazy as that might have sounded within the last decade. NBA 2K seemed like it was starting to stagnate until 2K23 brought back some hope with the excellent addition of My Eras, a new feature within My NBA, the game's franchise mode, which allowed users to jump into a past decade of their choosing and relive or change NBA history, with official draft classes for every year along with accurate logos, uniforms, arenas, rules, and league structure for each season. Even the in-game presentation changed depending on the decade with the visual quality and broadcast packages changing to reflect their era. NBA 2K23 was a game I enjoyed, despite me finding 2K18 through 2K22 quite underwhelming. Until that point, very few new features were added to the game each year, while microtransactions and in-game costs increased. I was hoping 2K23 would be a turning point, but last year's title, NBA 2K24, was barely any different from 2K23, with some tiny updates to my eras in a more monetized game than ever before. The auction house in my team was ruined, and a new battle pass was added which gives players exclusive cards and items only available through that pass. That's a pretty decent jump from where we were. Previously, you would pay $70 for the base game, and while you could pay more money for VC for my career and my team, you could at least unlock everything the game had to offer with enough grinding. Starting with 2K24, however, there are now items, some including my team player cards, that can only be unlocked by purchasing the pass. $70 alone can no longer buy you everything the game has to offer, no matter how hard you grind. Only the sports gaming genre can get away with such aggressive monetization tactics. On top of that, have you noticed the declining graphics of NBA 2K? Every year we hear about how good 2K's graphics are, and some will make comments like, all 2K focuses on is graphics, never the gameplay. Well, I think graphics have actually regressed over the years, gotten worse. NBA 2K24 takes up over 100 gigabytes. Yes, way too much space. But why is that? It's because the game is built upon all the previous 2Ks that came before it, and there's a ton of unused assets hidden inside the code, taking up space on your console. Because 2K isn't built from the ground up, it still faces legacy limitations, especially when it comes to available memory for things like graphics. In order to keep the massive, bloated, and ugly city in the game, the game's visuals have to suffer overall. To keep the city in the game, things like court reflections and lighting are much worse than they should be. This is why games like NBA Live 19 appear to have better looking hardwood, or why NBA 2K14 appears to have more jersey physics and better lighting. 2K is being held back by the city and the game's overall bloat, which was impressive back in 2020, but nowadays I think people just want to get back to the actual basketball. The focus of NBA 2K should be on the NBA aspects of the game, not unnecessary fluff like the city that exists solely to justify the increasing amount of microtransactions. Why would you need to buy VC to buy a virtual scooter to get around a virtual city if there wasn't a virtual city in the first place? The shareholders of Take-Two Interactive seem to have more control over the game than the actual developers. 2K's glory days appear to be in the past. I don't believe anything substantial is changing with NBA 2K25, so I'm expecting to be disappointed. Let's go over what's been announced so far. First, we have the cover with Jason Tatum. What's with the blur on the left and right? I miss the old 2K covers with the red theme and the interesting artwork. This is just an image of Tatum with a logo slapped over it. Perhaps this is just how modern style is, but the simplicity is kind of boring. It's just a game cover, so it doesn't really matter, and most people seem to buy digital copies of games anyways, but I thought it was worth pointing out. It sucks to see, but the days of owning physical media seem to be dwindling. Subscriptions and renting are being pushed more than ever. Companies want you to pay forever while owning nothing. It happened to music, it happened to TV and movies, and soon it's going to happen to video games. Don't be surprised if 2K becomes a subscription in the future, where you get access to the latest 2K with the latest rosters for as long as you're subscribed. And if you unsubscribe, you lose access to the game. 
I think that is coming in the near future, but it's just a guess. We have no gameplay footage as of right now, yet 2K is asking for pre-orders. You can buy this game that you know nothing about right now for its full price. The lack of competition in sports gaming brought us to this point. If people are going to buy NBA 2K25, no matter how good or bad it is, just because it's the new NBA game, then 2K has no reason to actually try. That's why I believe EA needs to bring back NBA Street. NBA Live would not sell well enough to compete with 2K, but NBA Street might. It's an iconic name, and the arcade-leaning streetball gameplay would translate well to modern online gaming. Competing with 2K's online park and my team modes with less of a grind and less monetization overall could make EA a ton of money and win over the popular opinion, and in return, force 2K to try much harder. We know 2K25 will have four editions, and the Hall of Fame edition will have Vince Carter on the cover. The Hall of Fame edition does include League Pass still, which somewhat helps justify its price. The game will release on September 6th, and I will be reviewing it shortly after. The game is still releasing on old-gen consoles, which is likely holding back gameplay and graphical improvements for all versions. College Football 25 was a good game in part because the dev team only had to focus on getting the game running on next-gen hardware. They didn't need to waste time and money on the old-gen game, and that made the final product better. The only reason 2K still releases for the PS4, Xbox One, and Switch is so that they can make money off of VC purchases from those in older hardware. Nothing new is added to these versions beyond rosters and logos. Good news! The PC version of 2K25 is the next-gen version, finally. So now modders will finally have access to the best version of the game. That might be the best version to get, as the graphics and lighting can be drastically improved with mods. 2K announced a sixth era for the My Era's mode, a more compact and interactive city, and new pro play technology driving gameplay. That is essentially everything new announced for this game. A sixth era is unnecessary in my opinion. This is the third year of the My Era mode. We should be able to start from any year, not an era. Hopefully the new era is during the 50s or 60s with a black and white film green presentation style, similar to what we saw in NBA 2K12. But to truly innovate, being able to choose any starting year from 1960 to present day would be ideal. A more compact city sounds good in theory, and hopefully it being smaller would open up resources for the rest of the game, such as for things like graphics or gameplay, but from early screenshots, the game looks no better than 2K24, which looks no better than 2K23, which looks no better than 2K22, which looks no better than 2K21. We have nine screenshots available for 2K25 right now. Here's the first one. Jason Tatum looks fine, but this doesn't look any different from 2K24 to me, besides the jersey patch being updated, which has nothing to do with graphics. The way the jersey folds still looks jagged, and the lighting seems flat and dull. The lighting looks the same as always. Now we get a look at Vince Carter, the other cover athlete. This looks terrible to me. He just doesn't look right. If you told me this was a screenshot from NBA 2K19, I would believe you. This picture of Shea looks alright, his face is shiny, he is in fact sweating, we all know 2K loves sweat, but he looked just as sweaty last year. The jersey lighting looks dull as always. Here's Wemby. Looks like the last five 2Ks to me. Here's Tatum again. His biceps are apparently true to life now, where before he just had generic biceps. Nice. Another look at Vince. Another look at Wemby. Another look at Shea. Here's Ajo Wilson, cover athlete of the WNBA edition of the game. This is supposed to show her signature rolled jersey style. But when looking at a picture in real life side by side, it's clear just how bad the graphics are on modern 2K. The jersey looks like CGI from the first Shrek movie. It doesn't have the right lighting or wrinkles or folds or shine you would expect in a 2024 video game. College Football 25 has much better jersey graphics, even though it's a football game. And pretty much any modern game will have better looking clothing textures than 2K. Here's some clips from NBA 2K19. Is it just me, or does this look almost identical to 2K25? This footage is so old, it has Ben Simmons scoring in it. Here's 2K21. This looks better than 2K24, or the screenshots from 2K25. 
2K25 certainly doesn't look better than this, and this is a four-year-old game. Graphics are not as important as gameplay, I understand that, but I really feel like 2K needs to step it up in both areas. And if keeping the city in the game and releasing old gen versions is holding the main game back, then 2K needs to make some serious changes. The new Pro Play gameplay is, according to 2K, immersive technology that directly translates NBA footage into engaging gameplay. Get up close and personal with your favorite NBA superstars and immerse yourself in clutch moments, as Pro Play powers the most authentic NBA experience to date. Sounds like what they say every year. We need to see gameplay footage. Why would anyone pre-order this game right now? I used to really enjoy playing 2K, and even in recent years, I always appreciated how the series took franchise mode more seriously than EA did. During the late 2010s, 2K was head and shoulders above all other sports games. But what have they really done since then? The gap is closing, and 2K is getting worse instead of getting better. I barely played NBA 2K24, because the online modes require a grind or more money, and the offline modes were barely any different than 2K23, and the on-court experience didn't feel any better. Will 2K give me a reason to play NBA 2K25? So far they've shown us that Tatum has more realistic biceps. I'm gonna need to see more than that. NBA 2K doesn't feel fresh anymore. It feels too familiar and it no longer feels worth $70. I hope that changes soon. EA, release a new NBA streak. That is our best hope for